Scarface and the Untouchable, Al Capone, Elliot Ness, and the Battle for Chicago is a dual biography by Max Allen Collins and A. Brad Schwartz that intricately details the legendary confrontation between gangster Al Capone, one of America's most notorious criminals, and Elliot Ness, the legendary Prohibition agent who helped bring him down. The book captures the roaring atmosphere of 1920s and 30s Chicago, an era marked by rampant corruption, violence, and the illegal liquor trade. At the heart of this world was Al Capone, christened Scarface due to a notable scar on his face. He was the de facto ruler of the Chicago underworld, a crime czar who had established an empire on the foundation of illegal bootlegging, gambling, prostitution, and intimidation. Capone was a man of contrasts, charismatic yet ruthless, beloved by many for his Robin Hood-like charitable work, while simultaneously feared for his role in violent episodes such as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Amid the rampant lawlessness and the failure of the law to make a substantial impact on organized crime stood Elliot Ness, an incorruptible agent of the Bureau of Prohibition. Ness, along with a hand-picked team of agents known as the Untouchables, due to their resistance to bribery and corruption, made it their mission to destroy Capone's empire. Unlike many others in law enforcement who turned a blind eye or were on the take, Elliot Ness embodied a relentless spirit and a moral fortitude, which made him an implacable foe to Capone. Collins and Schwartz vividly recreate the ongoing cat-and-mouse struggle between Ness and Capone, which became emblematic of the broader fight against organized crime. Although Ness was limited by the scope of his legal authority, which centered on enforcing prohibition rather than directly tackling Capone's criminal empire, he ingeniously found ways to disrupt the gangster's operations. This involved innovative tactics, including wiretaps and forensic accounting, to trail Capone's illicit activities back to him. Importantly, while Ness and his untouchables focused on capturing evidence by raiding breweries and distilleries, it was the work of other government agencies, particularly the IRS, that ultimately brought Capone's reign to an end. The book details the significant but often overlooked role of Frank J. Wilson and his team of auditors who meticulously tracked Capone's income tax evasion, eventually succeeding where many others had failed. One of the most emphatic points of the narrative is the media circus that surrounded both figures. Capone often courted the press and enjoyed a twisted kind of celebrity status, while Ness and his team's efforts were glamorized and mythologized, shaping the public's perception of the battle for Chicago. Balancing meticulous research with narrative flair, the authors provide a critical view of how these figures were portrayed in contemporary reports and later media representations, including the impact on their respective legacies. The book also explores the personal lives and character development of both men. Capone's luxurious life and possible syphilitic decline contrast with Ness's more humble existence and his personal struggles, including his fight against alcoholism, which was tragically ironic given his role in Prohibition. These elements flesh out the personalities behind the public figures, offering insight into their ambitions, vulnerabilities, and motivations. Ultimately, Capone's conviction for income tax evasion resulted in an 11-year prison sentence, which was a victory for Ness and the various authorities involved, though Capone's jailing more closely related to the financial crimes exposed by Wilson's team. While imprisoning Capone was a significant achievement, it did not entirely alleviate Chicago's problems with crime and corruption, which were systemic and required more extensive solutions than just the downfall of one man. Capone's time in prison was difficult. His mental and physical health declined sharply, exacerbated by untreated syphilis and the harsh conditions of incarceration, particularly at Alcatraz. Meanwhile, although Ness had succeeded in his mission, his career thereafter was marked by mixed results. He faced challenges in his later roles in law enforcement and private endeavors, and his personal life also suffered. Both figures, in their respective domains, had risen to the pinnacle of power, only to experience dramatic falls. Capone died in 1947, a broken shell of his former self, no longer the flamboyant kingpin of crime. Ness, despite his formidable accomplishments, faded into relative obscurity until the release of the Untouchables TV series in the late 1950s, 
and subsequent portrayals in other media revived interest in his life and career. Scarface and the Untouchable concludes with a reflection on the enduring legacies of Capone and Ness. Their mythic conflict has become a staple of American folklore, representing the broader struggle between crime and justice, order and chaos. Through their exhaustive examination of the two men's lives, Collins and Schwartz reimagine the well-trodden history with newfound depth and resonance. Their narrative is not just the recounting of a historical episode. It is an analysis of two men who became symbols far greater than their individual lives. It is a testament to the notion that while the law may eventually prevail, the battle against crime and corruption is never-ending and continues to evolve with every generation. In the end, Scarface and the Untouchable serves as both an exciting true crime story and a thought-provoking historical study that provides substantial food for thought concerning the nature of heroism, the complexities of law enforcement, and the relentless struggle against crime, all set against the backdrop of one of America's most tumultuous periods. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.